Are you wondering how to keep your web designs fresh and timeless so that they can stand out from the crowd? Well, in this video, my friend, I'm going to be sharing my secret recipe on how to achieve just that. Let's go. So to stand out from the crowd, you basically need to do what everyone else doesn't do. Most web designers I found are trend hunters. They are always constantly looking for the latest trends. So that's what you don't want to do, basically. And that's one of the biggest pitfalls of web designers. They follow trends and they expect to do something fresh and timeless. That's not the way it works. So I'm going to teach you here in this video how to stop following trends and how to potentially start setting trends. If you're new to this channel and you want to stay up to date with my latest videos covering advanced web design and business skills, make sure to subscribe and to turn on the notifications. Let's talk about the three secrets that I use to create fresh and timeless web designs. Step number one, it's create the graphic universe. So for example, let's say that you're um, doing research or you're going to do a website for a furniture shop. You want to, the first thing is you want to create a board on Pinterest. That's the first step in every project that I do. I start by creating a board on Pinterest and then I start searching for keywords. So basically here you will see that I have a furniture board and I put graphic universe example. You can check this board in the, in the description. And so basically what you want to start doing is start searching for keywords related to the project. So let's say that we start with the most obvious um, keyword, which is furniture. And so we use that and we add, for example, the obvious search, right? Furniture web design. Okay. And so what I'm going to start doing here is basically let me find here the okay so i'm gonna basically start pinning to that board many of this um first examples that appear right because if they appear in the top uh, results it's because of a reason so i'm here not really sifting through the content i'm rather you know just saving ideas of course you want to make sure that it's relevant to the topic right um, so for example here a bicycle doesn't make sense so don't just pin anything uh, but just pin whatever you see this that is relevant on the top search relevant to your project okay so let's say that's let's stop there the the more here the merrier you will want to aim to save at least at least a hundred pins okay a hundred pins not less than that sometimes i end up with 150 sometimes i end up with 200 sometimes i end up with 300 but at least on the very minimum you want to save a hundred pins the next thing you want to do is furniture right what's a keyword based with uh, well let's first let's do this search for ab abstract representations of the main keywords so for example i just searched for the obvious search right furniture web design okay that we covered that um now let's search for abstract representations of the main keywords for example furniture so an abstract representation could be an icon so furniture icon Let's see what what comes up. Okay, I like this, so I'm gonna save it. Um, right. The other thing is like actual furniture. So you wanna actually save furniture um, pins, furniture Im furniture images on your board. Why? Because you're looking for patterns in the shapes and the visuals of the topic that you're looking that you're researching for on, and that you're going to be designing for so furniture icon mm, maybe couch for example icon what happens if i search for couch icon okay boom 
uh, right? And so you you search for abstract representations of things related to the topic. So a couch could be one, right? And you save some, right? From this um, research, you're gonna be finding visual elements that can accom accompany you and help you visualize with visual metaphors the topic of your website and give a unique element to it, right? So icon could be one idea, logo, let's say furniture logo. That's another thing you can search for, right? And so you pin searches related to furniture. Branding, what have others um, done in terms of branding? I like this one, so I'm gonna pin it as well, right? And so you start pinning, pinning, pinning. I love this, actually this, um, this design. And so you keep pinning. Here, for example, you see a texture, right? It's a wooden texture, and there's a logo carved on that. So another idea. And so in this way, you're going to be creating what I call the graphic universe of your project. So now if we go to our saved projects and we find furniture. So in this way, you're going to start creating what I call the graphic universe. Images that don't necessarily have to be websites, but rather like I don't know, textures, couches, actual furniture, like you can search for different types of furniture, pin them here, and then you're gonna have like a good idea of the aesthetics of the project that you're working for. The other thing is like if you if you have a niche, you wanna you wanna be able to find something that is unique to each client because if you're doing furniture for you know all of the all of your websites then you're gonna have troubles you know because you're gonna have the same basically the same board if you do this process so you want to uh, be able to learn from the client their unique differences between you know each shop and try to visualize that in your research as well so once you've done that uh, that's the first process uh, this the first step of the process it's half of the battle right if you if you do this right you will have um, ideas that, that will help you in the next steps, okay? And that will help you differentiate yourself. Now, one last thing I want to say is that um, you want to search what others, the concept here is you want to search what others aren't searching. So if you were to trace the references of an interface design back to the original source, we would always end in nature, okay? And I'm gonna insert here a pyramid of references, the pyramid of references, how I call it. And so you're gonna see there that, you know, as you as you go back in time, you know, now we have Tribble, um, then like before that it was Behance, before that inter like general interfaces, um, then we had graphic designs, and before that we had inventions, right? And before inventions, there were there was nature. Right? Like the, the first most uh, raw source of inspiration is gonna always be nature. So you can go back in time in references, re reference things that aren't currently being referenced, right? Like for example, if you go to Dribble, everyone, every other web designer is going to Dribble, but you can reference um, graphic design books, you can reference magazines, you can reference. Um, things from architecture, from industrial design. So try to broaden your search and search where people aren't searching. And that's going to give you an edge and it's going to help you differentiate your designs. So now you have done your graphic universe. You have more than 100 pins, a vast uh, number of visual, visual references that will help you decide what to do. So now you want to define the overall look and feel. And that's step number two, define the overall look and feel. So once you've done the research, you quickly start designing some options for the client to choose from. And that's one of the ways that you can do it. So let me show you here. So basically for this project, PK Metal, I, I did four um, approaches that were slightly different from each other, right? 
Make sure that you like them all if you're doing this and make sure that each one has a, a unique edge, right? A, a, a clear difference. Here I was going on, on this one, I was going for something more industrial looking in a little bit more brutalist. Um, here I was going for something more timeless and minimalistic. And here, for example, I was going for something really powerful uh, because metal, right? Metal and big industry. And yeah, so I was think thinking like something really powerful and impactful. And here I was um, thinking about the textures of the metal, right? And so try to think of different approaches based on your research, right? And some, some general ideas that you may have and quickly mock up something for the client if you have uh, the time for it and if it makes sense. If not, what you can do is simply create mood boards based on your research. So basically you can just pick three, four, five um, images and designs that you like, you know, things that, that are uh, kind of like have an overall vibe and aesthetic that go with each other. You can put them together in a board and show that to a client. The problem with that is that most clients won't understand how would that translate to their website. So um, I don't use that approach that much, honestly, only with people that are like design savvy. And the other thing is that you can directly design what you have in mind, like one concept. And if you feel confident with it, with, you know, that approach and you have confidence that you understood what, what the client is looking for, then you can directly show one concept and that's that has to be enough in some of the, the cases once you've done that and you've you know um, defined the overall look and feel of the website now you want to start uh, adding visual metaphors so step number three add visual metaphors now how do you add visual metaphors right so what you want to do is go back to your board and try to find patterns, visual patterns in your references. So for example, so this is PK metal and this is the board that I created for this, uh, you know, metal company, right? So I started looking for metal. I started looking, you know, uh, pieces of metal, right? Like this. And one thing that I noticed is that there's a lot of, um, of screws. So this shape, this circular shape started to appear in a lot of the like here, here, and you know, things like this, right? Um, so I said, well, okay, why not take that into the design and use it as a visual element that conveys, uh, you know, that is a visual metaphor with a rhetoric that um, points to the topic of the website, okay? So, for example, you can see it in the um, you can see the screws in the loading, but you can also see them throughout the page. As you scroll, you will see, you know, uh, small circles that also, as you scroll, they kind of um, twist, like they're being um, screwed, right? And so that's a, just a slight um, visual metaphor that goes a long way to separate your you know this project from every other project right is this small details of um meta visual metaphors that you can find based on the topic and the, your client that will help you separate so there let me show you some more examples um i'm going to show you two more this is a independent film uh, studio that releases video clips and films okay so basically you can see that there's things like uh, Kodak um, and I researched a little bit about uh, old cameras because this is a vintage um, kind of look and feel so I, I researched for like old but also modern so like a combination of both and you can see throughout the whole uh, the whole website that there's, for example, that that loading animation of the hover, it's kind of like a camera in, like, getting a focus, right? Um, so things like that throughout the whole 
website okay there's um, this other project where this is like um, an investment management for John Elway and so if you don't know him he was a, a very famous you know American football player and so he, he used to play for a club that had this colors so and, and the number seven was his number in you know in the field so he was known by quarterback seven and so you know you will see a lot of elegant um, badges and stuff like that that relate to that um, to the topic and to John Elway and at the same time you will see those colors that trace back to the to the um, club or the college where he uh, where he was playing that I don't remember the name I think it was the first one uh, if I don't remember if I remember correctly it was the first uh, club where he started playing in his career so basically what I'm saying is you want to trace back your decisions your visual decisions to the topic of your website and your client in particular amazing my friend so now you have learned my secret recipe on how to make your website or web designs fresh and timeless so that you can stand out from the crowd i hope this video was useful if you learned something please give it a like and let me know in the comments below if you have any follow-up questions now if you want to join thousands of students in learning how to design beautiful websites with the golden canon grid i prepared a free course just for you so make sure to check it out the link is going to be below that's it my friends and as always let's bridge the gap one pixel at a time see you in the next one